dub quick tip or music quick tip for that matter. This is Jesse Dubmatics here and I'll be doing a few of these little short videos, little tips, uh, little things that I might uh, get questions about or think about. I'm putting together a list so over time we'll try to fill it out. So this came from Archie Sarge, somebody I've been working with out of Belgium for a while and he was asking about phasing on bass. He's heard it on Mad Professor and you've heard it on like Wackies and everywhere else. Uh, there's a few ways to do it. One of the tricks is that you have to have upper frequencies. So if low end uh, bass lines, there's no point. You're not going to hear it. So you want like octaves up where you can really kind of hear the distinguishing aspects of it. Uh, there's also another thing that I will do. Uh, phasing can add movement. I tend to route things through my outboard gear, which will be a separate video. Uh, so I have six auxiliary sends and on each one a different uh, piece of outboard gear, Chord Chaos, Pad, Benny Dub, etc. I'll, I'll share with that later. And what I'll do is I'll run through the baseline track. And so I have the main chord track here. You can see this is the whole thing and it's an example. I'll play a quick line. That's an upper register octave, which sounds great. You can hear it. So if I throw a phaser on it, so there's two things that I've done. So this is the actual outboard gear version. So it says bass effects. If I put that on, you're going to hear I've got a phaser, a filter, and an echo on it. So it gives you a little bit of movement and interest. get that nice finger slide it gives you a little dimension and also smooths out the overall sound which I like uh, something of interest for when you add effects or things like that if you look down where my mouse is here it's panned to the right it could go to the left it could go to the right it's wherever there's some space and wherever you're gonna hear it in the mix so that's one thing so if you don't have outboard gear and you're using plugins uh, there's lots of internal stuff um, that you can use and one of them of course is the uh, Internal DAWs, everyone has them. You'll have a phaser on there. I use sound toys. I love them a lot uh, as far as their quality and what I'm getting out of it. So I'll tend to use the Phase Mistress, their Reverb, their Echo, not the Reverb, their Echo, and a couple other toys. So I've put one over here to kind of set it up in here so you can hear it. So here's this piece without Reverb. Or phase. So here's with the Phase. So it sounds pretty cool. You can hear it in context though, if you hear it in the track. It's there, but it's not that uh, distinguishable. So what we'll do is we'll try over here where we knew that I had this lower part where it was the active outboard gear. That was the outboard gear. So let's get rid of that and let's just hear this. Now let's hear it in context with the song. So there you go. With that upper octave, you can actually hear it. It's it's subtle, but it's there. And what it does, it creates that nice little movement. And I find a lot of the times in tracks, you're looking for those little details that kind of set that song apart and add interest to the ears. Because really, that's what our ears are always doing. They're listening. And they're processing things that come in. So when you hear people write about songs, there's like every four bars, you have to have something new. In dub, that's the beauty of it. There's always something going in. It's it's you could overcrowd it, but it's these little details that make uh, a little those little differences. So they say the devil's in the details. So that's absolutely true for tunes. So little shots like that throughout a track, you might do that one or two times if there's space. You don't want to overdo it because the ear expects to hear it all the time. Sometimes it's nice not to give them all that and keep them listening. So hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, you can email me at dubmatics at dubmatics.com and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll be back with some more tutorials, little tips for you. All right, take care, talk soon.